Hello and welcome to Literacy Volunteers of Greater Portland's new tutor training. This presentation will focus on goal setting. In this lesson, you will learn about SMART goals, practice setting SMART goals, and troubleshoot goal setting with practice scenarios. In addition to the needs that you discover your student has through informal assessment, goals drive the work you do together. It's important to help students clarify goals and objectives, but how do we do that? Our goals can oftentimes feel really big, and it's important for tutors that the work we do is concrete and achievable, and most importantly, can be accomplished within the time that we have available to volunteer in the program and to work with our students. So we turn to the SMART goal model to help us have a framework for thinking about how to set goals and more specifically how to clarify achievable and concrete goals with our students. The SMART goals model focuses on these five principles. They must be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time bound. Let's dive a little deeper into this five prong approach to setting goals. With regard to the first section, specific, goals should be simplistically written and clearly defined what you're going to do. You should be able to answer the questions, what, why, and how. Moving down to measurable, goals should be measurable so that you have tangible evidence that you have accomplished the goal. For example, it's very common for people who are trying to lose weight to have a weight loss goal, but how do they know that they've accomplished the goal? Generally, it's by pounds or inches, and once those pounds or inches have been lost, they know that they've accomplished their goal. Achievable. Goals should be achievable. They should stretch you slightly so you feel challenged, but defined well enough so that you can achieve them. Results driven. Goals should measure outcomes, not activities. And lastly, time bound. Goals should be linked to a time frame that creates a practical sense of urgency or results in tension between the current reality and the vision of the goal. Without this tension, the goal is unlikely to produce a relevant outcome. All of our adult students are motivated to ask for help from our program because they recognize that they need assistance to accomplish their goals. However, not all students come with clearly defined goals. Sometimes goals are vague and need to be smartened up before we can begin to work on them. Let's look at some examples of goals. On the left side, we have our not smart goals, and on the right, we have our smart goals so that we can see how they, co they, they compare and contrast. Um, the first one says, I want to read. If we apply smart goal principles to that goal, it might look more like I will learn 50 new sight words in five weeks, which I will be able to read in a paragraph or a short story. The next one is, I want to speak English. The smart version of this is, I will learn key vocabulary which I can use at the grocery store. And the last one, I want to get a better job. I will learn how to search for jobs online and apply to at least one job a week. And as we can see, the SMART goals are specific. They're measurable, measurable by virtue of the outcomes that they would produce. And if we applied a timetable to all of them, they would be time bound. Assignment 8 is a goal setting activity. And this is one that you don't have to submit to Rachel. You can if you would like, but if you have a goal that you're working on, other than to become a literacy volunteers, then this may be a, a great activity for you to try to think about how best to accomplish your goal. So think of a personal goal you're working on or would like to accomplish, and then according to SMART, the SMART goal uh, model principles, write out your goal paying attention to the guidelines for each step.
Assignment 9 is an assignment that we'd like for you to submit to Rachel. Choose two of the scenarios on the next slide. Answer the question, how would you make this a SMART goal? Detail your answer using the SMART goals model. And there's an example here on the slide for you to refer back to if you need to. Um, as always, you can include your answer in the body of an email or send it in a Word document as an attachment. If you'd like to um, have a, a better idea of the SMART goal model, there's an attachment here on the slide. You can access that document by just clicking on the picture. Assignment 9 is a goal setting activity. Choose two of the scenarios here to uh, apply SMART model principles to submit your answer to Rachel. I'll read through these examples for you. The first says, Oscar is an advanced student from Columbia. He would like help studying for the AccuPlacer test, the entrance exam for Southern Maine Community College. He does have the language skills he needs to take the test. How will you help him make this a SMART goal? Number two, Heba is an intermediate student. She has lived in Maine for eight years. She would like a tutor's help improving her English speaking so that she can navigate the community better. How would you help her make this a SMART goal? Three, Fernando is an intermediate student from Angola. He needs to get a job to support his wife and two children. He's looking for help improving his speaking. How would you help him make this a SMART goal? Four, Nastejo is from Somalia. She has been in the U.S. for 10 years. She never went to school. Now she wants to learn to read and write. How would you help her make this a SMART goal?